Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. We're soon going to find out what questions senators have for both sides in the impeachment trial. I'm Andrew Dimmer with the latest from Capitol Hill. Breezy and cooler this morning as we take a live look downtown. GMSA starts right now. Good morning. It is Wednesday. It is January 29th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. Yeah, it's chilly out there this morning. The uh, temperature on my in my car said 51, but it felt like 40. Mm -hmm. There's still a good breeze this morning, and that's actually keeping temperatures up a little bit. It's the whole chocolate milk thing. Oh, yeah, of course, it's the chocolate milk thing. The chocolate milk thing. If you yeah. keep chocolate milk stirred up, it's fine. If you let it sit, all the heavier, cooler air, cooler particles, ah, the heavier particles the settle down to the bottom. Thing. And that's what the atmosphere does, too. Thanks, Mike. Now I want chocolate milk. Well, that and he probably he would have been the coolest science teacher ever. Uh -huh. I didn't make that up. I actually I know. somebody told me that. But uh, what a hot chocolate. Hot so chocolate sounds that fabulous. Sounds really good because, yes, it is pretty uh, cool out there. And uh, I think we're still going to continue to uh, cool down. We've got clear skies. It's a gorgeous. Hey, hey it's finally January again. Uh, 43 up the road at Bernie 47 here in town. Low 40s in the hill country. And I think some of this uh, cool air will continue to kind of filter on in here. Wind chill temperatures right now. Low 30s out uh, in the hill country. 32 at Lost Maples. 42 is what it feels like here in town. And the wind is out of the northwest about 10, 15 miles per hour. There have been a couple of uh, gusts so far this morning. And again, that's keeping the atmosphere kind of stirred up. So it's, it's either temperatures drop down or it feels that cold. So in any way you slice it, it's pretty chilly out there. Grab a jacket. You might want to keep it handy throughout the rest of the day. Mold is on the high side. Mountain cedar, moderate. Same thing with ash. I have a feeling mountain cedar, though, with those winds may go up uh, when the updated count comes out later on this morning. Temperatures will stay in the low 40s or drop down a little bit more. Wind chill temperatures, 30s and 40s this morning and throughout the rest of the day. 62, plenty of sunshine, a spectacular looking day. But again, jacket's not a bad idea. You're definitely going to want it the next couple of days. It's going to be even cooler and it's going to be damp. We got some showers. Then we'll take a look at the weekend coming up. Time saver traffic right now on this Wednesday morning. Here is Officer Marcus Trujillo. Good morning, sir. Well, good morning, Mike, and good morning, everyone at home. And good morning to Leslie's morning greeters out there who are still feverishly working. Uh, we have some uh, rolling construction that's uh, temporarily paused up there on the connector ramps 410 281 area, but uh, we also see them in a few other areas like the access road to 410 over there around Jackson Keller. So just watch out for those flashing lights and for those construction cones. Remember to reduce that speed. 35 37, the interchange here in the downtown area so far, no issues there. And 35 at Evans up on the northeast side, traffic moving along fairly well. No problems here. 410 at Cherry Ridge, you can see the 410 I 10 interchange. Leslie? Thank you very much, Marcus. New this morning, police are searching for a man who they believe is responsible for beating an older relative to death late last night. It happened at the Spanish Keys Apartments on Babcock Road in Balcones Heights. Our Sarah Costa is there live. So what do we know about this investigation, Sarah? Good morning, and I just spoke with the Balcones Heights uh, police chief moments ago. The scene just clearing right now, and he did confirm with me it was a son who fatally beat his own 76-year-old mother to death earlier uh, last night. What he told us is that the First, the woman called police just after 7 o'clock last night after her and her 55-year-old son, Michael Kobar, got in some kind of argument at the Spanish Keys apartment complex. The woman told police that there had been an argument and that her son had been living with her. They, she called them to vac help vacate him off the property. When police arrived, the man had already left the property. Then police say around 11 p.m., they got a call from Kobar's friend from a Shell gas station across the street requesting a welfare check at the apartment where the woman lived. When police arrived, they found the 76 year old woman dead and she had been badly beaten. At this time, police are looking for that man, 55 year old Michael Kobo Kobar. At this time, they believe he is the one responsible for the death of his mother. Live from Balcone Heights, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. The U.S. Marshals Service Lone Star Fugitive Task Force continues its search for a man wanted for child sex crimes. Zachary George Harris has reportedly been on the run for nine months so far. Deputy U.S. Marshal Chris Bozeman says Harris has an active arrest warrant involving four counts of continuous sexual abuse of a child. His last known place of residence was Austin, but he's been known to reside here in San Antonio as well. 
He is described as a 23-year-old white man with brown hair, blue eyes. He stands six feet tall, weighs about 160 pounds. If you have any information that could lead to his arrest, the number to call is 210-657-8500. The Texas Historical Commission asking for more time to review the city's request to move the cenotaph. The monument sits at the Alamo, previously approved to be relocated a few hundred feet away as part of a larger plan to redesign Alamo Plaza. Back in December, demonstrators against, uh, against the idea surrounded the cenotaph. Commissioners say they'd like more information on the project, including an explanation as to why it should be moved and a list of potential alternate sites to be moved to. The Texas Historical Commission is hoping to find out more during its next meeting on March 24th and 25th. Good morning headline Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and the GOP senators met behind closed doors after President Trump's legal team ended their opening arguments. In the meantime, Democrats continue to push former National Security Advisor John Bolton to appear under oath at the heart of the impeachment case. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the latest. That ends our presentation. The president's defense rests its case. You cannot impeach a president on an unsourced allegation. Now the next phase of the trial begins questioning. Over the next two days, senators will be allowed to submit questions to the House managers or the president's counsel, but not both. Questions must be submitted to the chief justice in writing. Mr. Chief Justice, I have uh, reached an agreement with the Democratic leader on how to proceed. But moving forward, all the attention now centering around witnesses. Republican leader Mitch McConnell telling his members in a closed door meeting that he does not have the votes to block them. Four key Senate Republicans suggest they want to hear from former National Security Advisor John Bolton. Bolton's upcoming book links the president to withholding aid from Ukraine in exchange for investigating Joe Biden. I think that Bolton probably has something to offer. And in another turn, the president's former chief of staff, John Kelly, reportedly now saying, I believe John Bolton, and suggesting Bolton should testify, saying if there are people that could contribute to this, either innocence or guilt, I think they should be heard. This while Trump's personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, on CBS News, ripped Bolton for his book. Here's the only conclusion I can come to, and it's a harsh one, and I feel very bad about it. He's a backstabber. And the question period could last up to eight hours today and eight hours tomorrow with that critical witness vote possibly coming on Friday. Now, if no new witnesses are allowed to testify in this trial, then things could wrap up by the end of the week. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Capitol Hill. We are following the latest developments involving NBA legend Kobe Bryant. Federal investigators said the helicopter he and eight others were in did not have the recommended warning system to alert the pilot he was too close to land. It's not clear if having this type of equipment would have prevented the crash. The actual determination of what caused that crash will take several months. San Antonio Spurs getting ready to go at it once again. They'll be up against the Utah Jazz tonight at 730. Saturday's game is versus Charlotte at 7.30 as well. 4.38 in the morning, 47 degrees. So to come, the former fiancé of late NFL player, a late NFL player, speaking out following a controversial Netflix documentary, what she had to say about Aaron Hernandez. Plus a mind-boggling piece of art, how one part of the Alamo City is getting drivers to slow down with a whole new perspective. And live cam giving us a look outside. Don't forget to put jacket on the kiddos today. They're going to need it. It's a little bit cool outside this morning and very breezy. Four forty one, the city of Windcrest got creative in effort to get drivers to slow down. It's the first optical illusion of its kind in the Lone Star State. Take a look at this, everybody. The three dimensional floating crosswalk appeared just over a month ago outside Windcrest Elementary School. You have to get the view from the right angle, but what you do, you'll see the fun floating effect. Ron Lemos, the contractor who made it, said that he wanted to give it a try after hearing about other cities around the globe. That's cool. I want it to feel as if it's as, as a crosswalk that's floating and it's got a shade underneath so that way it kind of gives their perspective to kind of slow down. It gives them more time to, to be able to recognize who's around. 
While the price for the crosswalk is a little more than the average crosswalk, the city says it's exploring the possibility of adding more 3D crosswalks around the school. That's super duper cool. 442, 47 degrees like, on your Ooh. Wednesday morning. Up next, getting the help you need this income tax season. Who will be set up around town to help you help you process your return easier? And a conditional love, what the former fiance of Aaron Hernandez has to say about that Netflix docuseries suggesting he may have been bisexual or gay. Welcome back. It's 445. And your GMA First Look, the former fiancé of Aaron Hernandez, is speaking out after the Netflix docuseries sparked controversy online. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive. Do you still believe that your fiancé was innocent? The former fiancé of Aaron Hernandez speaking out to Amy Robach, addressing new claims put forth in the Netflix docuseries Killer Inside, The Mind of Aaron Hernandez. Do you want to comment at all on that aspect of this documentary and the rumors that have been there that Aaron may have been bisexual or gay? If he did feel that way, or if he felt the urge, I wish that I, I was told. I would not have loved him any differently. I would have understood. I, the emotional exclusive time. interview is coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, Just I'm Kenneth finish. Moten, ABC I'm News, New York. Right now it's 446. Income tax season is upon us. If terms like deductions, withholdings, and earned income credit make your head spin, you may be able to get some help. Our 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moritz shows us the volunteer program setting up shop all around town. Yes, ma'am. Your social and your ID. It's tax time at the Claude Black Community Center, where volunteers and laptops are fired up. I prefer somebody to do it. I don't trust myself <laughs> with the numbers and figures. So Jacqueline Coleman yeah. is using VITA, Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program. So is Kashonda Pellerin. <laughs> Because it's free. Free for households that earned up to $55,000 last year. Organizers expect 30,000 people to show up. One reason, not everyone's computer savvy. The technology divide is a huge deal. VITA has 19 local sites where taxpayers can bring their W-2s and more. Is there something that people tend to forget to bring? Yes. People tend to forget their Social Security card. If you're getting a refund, of course you want it now. The fastest way to get your money is to file electronically and to choose direct deposit. The IRS says most people do get their money within three weeks. If that's not fast enough, there's something new, a refund anticipation loan. While such loans can often be considered predatory, United Way's Jason Aleman says these are not. That means that if I'm really in need of getting my return immediately, I can take out a refund anticipation loan with River City Federal Credit Union here at our Vita sites and ensure that I will not be charged anything more than $25. Volunteers will be on the job through April 15th. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. 448. Let's check on the roadways. It was really, really a mess yesterday. Hopefully today it'll be a lot better. Things look, things are looking uh, much better out there. Well, what happened to the computer? It got stalled. There we go. Okay, so as you can see, everything out there on the map, uh, you can see that uh, travel in all directions running smoothly right now. Let's take another look at Transguide. We're going to start off over here. Uh, right now, 35 of Ben Zingleman. This is one of the areas where we had an accident that was delaying some traffic, but right now, Things are moving along fairly well with no problems at 410 at Austin Highway, all the way around to 410 at Fredericksburg Road. Take a look at 281 and Winding Way, north and southbound lanes, no delays, but it's still very early. So the good news this morning is the skies are, <clears throat> your visibility is clear, just not a lot of light out there, but it is clear and the roadways are dry. Plenty of space out there, no accidents to delay you. A little bit of rolling construction that's still moving around up there on the north side, 410, 281, 410 San Pedro area. But that's in the process of uh, moving off the roadways. They usually get out of here by 5 o'clock, so it's not to interrupt with that the first flow of traffic that we get. Is it just me or does that picture always look a little different? It's always looked a little Christmassy, silvery. Yeah, it yeah. looks like there's snow on the ground. <laughs> yeah, it and does, it could just be not. due to the number of lights yeah. uh, in that area, in that shot. I mean, look at all the lights mm -hmm. underneath 281 from the uh, parking areas and then also from the buildings around there. It's a pretty look.
Pretty perspective. How many days till Christmas? Oh I no! Don't, don't start that. Oh. I, I I'll, I'm going to wait till the, the December 20th this year. Well, I mean, think about it. As Liar. soon as the new year, it's like all of a sudden, going to start thinking about you know cowboy. Uh, Cowboy Breakfast, and then Rodeo, and there's Valentine's Day, and there's my the, anniversary. Uh, the, well, yeah, your birthday. <laughs> your birthday. I mean, <laughs> you know, that's the big, the first big one of the year, and it's just all these events come up and up and up. It goes. Don't fast. do that. What? Okay? Oh, he's looking, isn't he? No. Uh, it finally feels like January, at least, because we have been so. so yeah, I walked outside. I was like, ooh, nippy. Yep. And uh, tomorrow's gonna be one of those days. Today's gonna be beautiful with sunshine and low 60s. Good. Tomorrow's gonna be cloudy, kind of wet, low 50s, damp grilled cheese and soup kind of weather. It's going to be like throw the blankets back over your head tomorrow. But today, a uh, nice crisp start. And what a beautiful, beautiful picture. Yes, Wilson County, Colorado County out there. Wilson Hill, pardon me, in Colorado County. Great looking uh, sunset yesterday. Thank you very much for that. And there's a plane coming in. Great flying weather today. Nice, cold, and crisp out there. Sunrise is going to be spectacular. 41 right now, Kerrville, Comfort, 47 here in town, 39 lost Maples. And then you got to factor in the wind because we still have a decent breeze out there. So we do have wind chills down in the 30s, low 40s around here. It feels like 42 out there at the airport, 32 in lost Maples. Wind is out of the northwest about. Uh, 10, maybe 15 miles per hour. There were some gusts earlier this morning. It's kind of easing ever so slightly. And this, of course, like I was saying off the top of the show, prevents the temperatures from getting as cold as they could be the actual air temperature. But then on the flip side, we've got the wind chill to deal with. So no matter how you slice it, it's pretty cold out there. And look at the dry air. This is the water vapor imagery aloft in the atmosphere. The dark shade indicates some really dry air. That kind of tannish shade indicates bone dry air upstairs in the atmosphere, which, we, which means we're going to have those just in intense blue skies today. It's going to be gorgeous out there all day long. And then late tonight is when the clouds are going to start to work their way back into the picture. And by tomorrow morning, we will have cloudy skies, a couple of uh, sprinkly showers around the area, and then a few scattered showers around throughout the rest of the day tomorrow. Different computer model, about the same situation. We will keep some of those uh, showers around tomorrow, as well as on Friday, especially the first part of the day on Friday. And then I think we'll see some clearing later on in the day. And clearing overnight. Another very cool morning. The next couple of mornings are still going to be cool, but with the rain and you know, cloud cover and some showers here and there. But Saturday morning, different situation. It'll just be cool, dry, good looking day. And then we'll have a few more clouds around on Saturday. Cloudier skies Sunday. Another uh, chance for a couple of showers then on Monday. But today, just get out and enjoy it. Great day. Cold start though, 57 degrees then at noon. So we will warm up nicely, gain about 15 or so throughout the course of the morning. And then we top off at 62 for a high temperature, actually a little bit below normal. And that's been the trend. You know, we were at 80 just a couple of days ago on Sunday, and it's been going down and down, and down each and every day, but plenty of sunshine today. And then tomorrow, Keep going downhill, 52 for a high temperature. That's it with some showers, one of those damp, chilly sort of days. Friday, there's somewhat of a rebound in temperatures thanks to a little bit of clearing late in the afternoon, 58 degrees and then 65 on Saturday. I think we'll have sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds on Saturday, more sunshine on Sunday. So overall, I think a nice weekend, just a little cloudier than than perfect like we've had every other weekend for the past. I you know, think for KSAT Corral, a little bit of clouds, 65 degrees and no rain sounds perfect. It's, it's going to be great. Nice and nice and cool. So grab a jacket when you go there. If you're going down and watch the uh, Western Heritage Parade or Cattle Drive or just stay at the KSAT Do you get to ride Corral. the Longhorn again? No. No? That, that's a, I mean, they have to put up the barricades so they don't like come and get us on the side. We don't want them to get you. When you have a herd by 50, 70 longhorns coming down there, you don't want to be on them. No, I guess that's probably dangerous. It's kind, of, kind of scary. Chicken. 453, <laughs> no longhorns. 453, <laughs> 47 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, an interview with the former Duke and Duchess of Sussex. What Harry and Meghan hope to do after leaving their roles as royals. Get ready in the spotlight. ABC getting behind the scenes look at all the latest royal drama. Harry, Meghan and the Crown will attempt to shed some light on what led the Duke and Duchess of Sussex to break with the royal family. The interview tonight at 9 right here on KSAT 12. Your time now just about 57 minutes after 4. Temperature outside 47 degrees. We all use emojis and texting, but what about in cars? Why some lucky drivers might be allowed to use them on their new license plates. And still ahead on GMSA, why prosecutors are calling a gold watch critical evidence in the medical center rapist case. The significance that that holds coming up. Live 
from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Now at five, a murder investigation under Wayne Balcones Heights. Police looking for a suspect responsible for the death of an elderly woman. Our Sarah Costa will be live with details. Plus, the impeachment trial may soon be coming to an end. Democrats and Republicans are talking about new witnesses. And outside with live cam, grab a jacket. Uh, back to more January-like temperatures, especially out in the Texas Hill Country. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday. It is January 29th. Thank you for being with us this morning. As we approach the end of the month, it's actually feeling like January again. Uh, it was kind of warm for a few days, but now it's cold, but no rain. Mike? Nope, different story tomorrow, though. We'll worry about that in a moment. And we're still looking like we're going to go down uh, the month of January. is going to uh, end without hitting freezing temperatures, and that'll be only the fifth time it's ever happened here in San Antonio. We've got to 46 right now, so we did drop one degree in the past hour. A low 30s out there in part, excuse me, upper 30s in parts of the hill country. And the air is still very, very dry. We do have a nice breeze out there, so wind chill feels like 40 here in town. And then you look at some of the wind chill temperatures out there in the hill country, and and knock off about anywhere five to 10 degrees. And it feels like it's in the low 30s right now in parts of the, uh, the hill country. We're going to have a breeze throughout most of the day. Here's what those wind chills look like right now. 32 in uh, Lost Maples, 35 up the road is what it feels like in Kerrville, 40 at Randolph. And wind is out of the northwest again, about 10, 15 miles per hour. And enough of breeze, like I said, throughout the rest of the day that a jacket's a pretty good idea, even though we're going to have plenty of sunshine. Molds on the high side. That with the dry air, I would suspect it's going to be dropping down when the updated count comes out later on today. Mountain Cedar, I'm feeling those trees are going to get another good shaking with all those uh, the northwesterly winds that we've been having today. As far as uh, yeah, rest of today, just sunny and beautiful, low 60s. Jacket kind of weather, then it's going to be very cold the next couple of days. A couple of showers around here uh, are possible tomorrow. I don't think it's going to be a big rain event, unfortunately, and that will last in through the first half of the day on Friday. Temperatures tomorrow only in the low 50s and then upper 50s on Friday. The weekend looks very nice. A couple more clouds, a couple of clouds hanging around here. A little bit warmer temperatures. Really, really nice looking weekend. Details coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. Anything big out there, Marcus? Well, right now everything is quiet, Mike. So uh, total uh, opposite of yesterday. That's a 180 degree change right now. No accidents. Uh, we have a little bit of slowdowns along Bedare Road, uh, but uh, then again, we do have those traffic lights between 1604 and 410, so that's to be expected. But look at all the other highways. No issues right now. Let's take a look at a couple trans guide cameras. 410 at Fredericksburg Road so far. No issues there and here in the downtown area. I 10 at the Y travel in and out of the downtown vicinity looking pretty good and up on the northeast side. 35 604. No delays. No problems. Mark. Thank you very much, Marcus. New this morning, a 76 year old woman brutally beaten to death in Balcones Heights. Police are now searching for her son, who they believe is responsible. It happened at the Spanish Keys Apartments in the 1100 block of Babcock Road. Sarah Costa is live at the complex with more on our top story. And Sarah, you say the medical examiner just left with the victim? They did, and the scene recently just did clear, but that victim, a 76-year-old woman, police describing the scene as a horrific one. I spoke with the police chief of Balcones Heights earlier this morning, John Jahanara, who says they are actively looking for the woman's son, 55-year-old Michael Wayne Kerbo, who they believe fatally beat his mother after they had an argument last night. The chief says they first got the call around 7 last night from the victim asking police to help her kick her son out of her apartment after the two got into an argument. When police arrived, Kerbo, her son, had already left the property. Then police say around 11 p.m. they got a call from a friend of Kerbo's from the Shell gas station across the street from the complex requesting a welfare check at the apartment where the woman lived. When police arrived, they found the 76 year old dead who had been badly beaten. That friend who made the call told police Kerbo had asked him to make that welfare call. Police say they continue to actively search for 55 year old Michael Wayne Kerbo this morning, who they believe is responsible for allegedly beating his mother to death here in Balcones Heights. Live from, live from Balcones Heights, I'm Sarah Costa, KZ 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Anton Harris was 16 years old when the series of rapes began. He was arrested in June 2017 following his graduation from Marshall High School, where he was a star basketball player. He always said, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. And, and uh, 
was polite. We never had any type of uh, issues with him. Olandek, Harris's basketball coach, provided police with a big break in the rape cases. He was shown this picture taken from a gas station security camera near the apartment complex where a woman had been raped. When I first saw the picture, I looked at the face and I thought it, it looked uh, like Anton. And when I scanned the rest of the picture and saw his legs, because uh, he's wearing shorts, um, I, I knew it was Anton at that time. With that identification, detectives obtained a warrant and searched an apartment that Harry shared with his family in the medical center area. There was like a rose gold colored uh, fossil watch um, that had like a, a gemmed face to it. That fit the description of a watch the woman Harris is on trial for raping said was stolen when she was attacked as she entered her medical center apartment on May 28th of 2017. The search also turned up two guns, a knife, and a gray hoodie. In most of the rapes, the victims reported that they were attacked by a slim African-American male wearing a gray hoodie who brandished either a knife or a pistol. This trial, as complex cases often do, has been moving slowly. This is the second week. Best guess for closing arguments, Thursday. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Paul Venema. If you'd like to know more details about this case and how it unfolded, just visit our website, ksat.com. Topping other morning headlines, a charter airliner with hundreds of Americans who evacuated from China has now landed here in the U.S. Plane left from China before dawn Wednesday. First stop was Anchorage, Alaska to refuel. Travelers will be rescreened for the coronavirus and hospitals prepared to treat those who may be infected. The plane landed early this morning in California after being diverted from its original destination. Now to the latest on the impeachment trial. The Senate could vote at the end of this week on whether to consider having witnesses and allowing new evidence. Mitch McConnell and the GOP senators met after President Donald Trump's legal team ended its opening statement. Democrats continue to push for former National Security Advisor John Bolton to appear under oath, saying he can offer a firsthand account of Trump's motivations for freezing aid to Ukraine. Two women are expected to testify in court today in the sex assault trial against Harvey Weinstein. Prosecutors are using the witnesses to strengthen their case against the former movie mogul. The judge has allowed both women to testify about prior bad acts that did not result in criminal charges. Both women claim Weinstein sexually assaulted them. 507, 46 degrees. As if using emojis in your text wasn't enough, one Vermont lawmaker proposed a bill to add emojis on, get this, license plates. We have more details coming up in Tech Bites. Strong odor has been lingering on parts of Broadway near the Pearl. What CPS says is causing that odor next. And live cam giving us a peek outside on your Wednesday morning. <clears throat> Excuse me, everybody. Thanks for being with us. We'll be back. A natural gas leak has been linked to a strong stench along parts of Broadway just north of the Pearl. People describe the scent as sewage and dead animals. CPS officials say a faulty boiler is part of the problem, and they're cutting off gas service to the customer until repairs can be made. District 1 Councilman Roberto Trevino says another contributing factor is a sewage rehab that the San Antonio water system is doing in the area. SAWS officials, though, say they don't believe their projects are causing the stench. Hmm. Mm, something smells fishy. <laughs> something definitely stinks about the story. <laughs> 511, 46 degrees. New discoveries have been made in the helicopter crash that killed Kobe Bryant, his daughter, and seven others. What the National Transportation Safety Board is saying about what they found out so far coming up next. We all hate robocalls. What the Justice Department is asking uh, regarding a scheme um, and efforts to shut down two companies behind those most annoying calls. What's my safe flight story? I spent a lot of time in my truck. It's my livelihood. So I'm not taking any chances when something happens to it. So when my windshield cracked, my friend recommended Safe Flight Auto Glass. Hi, I'm Adrian. Thanks for coming. Oh, no problem. Check it out. Yeah. It came right to me with expert service where I needed it. That service I can trust no matter what I'm hauling. Right, girl? Safe Flight Repair, Safe Flight Replace. 
every glass of Tropicana Pure Premium Orange Juice has a million little sips of sunshine. It's 100% of your daily vitamin C and 100% delicious, making every moment in the morning brighter. Tropicana, sip your sunshine. When life changes, so do your taxes. That's a reason to switch to Jackson Hewitt. Our tax returns come with a free lifetime accuracy guarantee. Life may change. Your lifetime accuracy guarantee won't. Tax prep guaranteed at Jackson Hewitt. The U.S. Justice Department is asking a judge to shut down two companies behind hundreds of millions of those robocalls. ABC's Kenneth Moten and Janae Norman have details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, the Justice Department is fighting back against those annoying robocalls. In a first of its kind move, the DOJ filed temporary restraining orders against two companies that allegedly allowed calls they knew were fraudulent. Apple boasted record earnings in what the company is calling a blockbuster quarter. The tech giant credits iPhone sales for, for the incredible numbers after the devices brought in an astounding $56 billion. And some lucky drivers could soon be allowed to add emojis to their license plates. A Vermont lawmaker proposed the bill which would allow drivers to display one of six options on their plate. The bill doesn't say which emojis those will be. Which one would you use? I would want to do angry face because I'm that type of driver. I would do crying laughing. Why are you crying? Because I'll cut you off and then just laugh about those it. Those are tech bites. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not nice. What would you do? I don't know. I'm I did not, little hands. Yeah, right. Uh, 516 right now. We now turn to the latest developments in the Kobe Bryant helicopter crash investigation. Investigators are revealing new clues about what went wrong. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the latest. As the remnants of the wreckage are cleaned away from the hillside, investigators are revealing new details about the final moments of Kobe Bryant and those eight others, including his daughter. The time from the descent to impact was probably about a minute. There was no black box in the helicopter and no recorder in the cockpit. The aircraft was seen circling in the thick fog. Bystanders saying they could already tell something was wrong. It was like gunning its engine. It was really loud and it was banking and turning really steep. The NTSB says it doesn't know why the chopper went into a steep dive. But officials do know that the pilot, Ara Zabayan, was rapidly accelerating before taking a sudden turn. And he was still turning when the aircraft slammed into the mountainside. How much did they clear missing the mountain by? Maybe 20, 30 feet. Experts say the helicopter was falling far too fast to ever avoid the crash. The aftermath of the scene spread over a quarter of a mile. This morning, four of the nine victims on board have been identified, including Zabayan, John Altabelli, Sarah Chester, and Bryant himself. Officials have yet to ID the remaining victims, including Bryant's daughter, Gianna. Overnight, Shaquille O'Neal emotional as he remembered his former teammate. The fact that uh, we're not going to be able to joke at his Hall of Fame ceremony. O'Neal later leading a chant outside the Staples Center. One more time. Kobe! 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 Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Right now it's 518. We're at 46 degrees. Let's check on the roadways once again. Smooth commute this morning, we're hoping. So far, Leslie, we have no accidents, so let's take a look. We're going to move from the map over to Transguide once again, folks. And 410 at Fredericksburg Road, no problems there. Moving over to 410 at Cherry Ridge. There you can see the interchange, I-10-410. A few vehicles out there, but uh, no delay, so there's no congestion just yet. 281 at Grayson, north and south on lanes running smoothly with no problems. I-10 at 1604. That's up on the northwest side over there by Fiesta, Texas, and uh, thought we had a shot of the airport area, but I guess they moved it. So let's move over here right now. 35 and 410 up on the northeast side. Traffic move along fairly well. And uh, 1604 Culero, you see no problems there. 37, 35 looking pretty good. 37 Jones, and there's the airport, 281 410 area. You can see down below eastbound and westbound lanes of 410 moving along nicely with no delays and no issues on the connector ramps between 281 and 410. Thank you, Marcus. Marcus. <laughs> it's only it's a Marcus. Marcus. He's yeah. the Swedish chef this morning. Oh, yeah. do your Swedish chef. <laughs> Close captioning. Good luck with that one. That's hilarious. <laughs> Marcus. Nicely said. Yeah. 
So look at this KSAC Connect picture. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Yeah, let's just move do on that right now. So, um, it, it finally feels like January this morning. So grab a jacket, and uh, we've got. What's going on? Here we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Somebody's in there Ooh. laughing at your uh, Swedish chef impersonation, I think. Uh, what a great picture. I love that. And that windmill in the foreground, that's beautiful. Thank you very much for those uh, KSAC Connect pictures. Make sure you keep them coming in. I love showing these in the morning. And if there's ever any sort of weather going on out there, that's you know perfect when we can get the help us tell the story and, and get all those great pictures. Going to be a fantastic sunrise this morning. So hopefully a lot of folks take a picture of that. 41 at Bernie, Comfort, Kerrville, 38, Lost Maples. Uh, temperatures are... Almost down to normal readings. Normal is uh, right around 41 degrees. However, you factor in the wind. We've got wind chills down in the mid to low 30s there. 40 at the airport Randolph as well as up the road in New Braunfels. Wind is uh, still out of the northwest about uh, uh, 10, maybe close to 15 miles per hour. A little bit breezier up the road in New Braunfels right now. We're going to have enough of a breeze today. It's not going to be overly windy, but enough to uh, maybe want to keep a jacket handy, especially if you're in the shadows. We're going to have lots of sunshine, but you know, with temperatures only in the 60s and those breezes, jacket's a pretty good idea. We have got bone dry air upstairs in the atmosphere. The dark shade is really dry, but then you get this and maybe a little more, but I mean, we're going to have some gorgeous blue skies today. It's going to be just one of those almost breathtakingly beautiful blue skies. And it's going to last all afternoon, all night long, and then we start to see the clouds come back in here late, late tonight, overnight, and into tomorrow morning. Probably a couple of uh, light little showers around the area tomorrow. And there's a chance for some uh, showers throughout the day. It doesn't look like it's going to be a big rain event, unfortunately. Maybe a little bit more uh, up there to the north of us. Different computer model, and it's got basically the same scenario that we're going to have that rain going through first part of the day on Friday. Then we're going to clear out somewhat Friday and start off on Saturday with a little bit more in the way of some clear skies. We'll have a, sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds on Saturday. More clouds then on Sunday and then another chance for a couple of showers around here coming into the picture on Monday. And temperatures, we're going to continue the decline. You know, we started off at 80 on Sunday and they've been declining all week so far. And it's going to continue the downward trend through the rest of the, uh, the work week and then come back up a little bit by the weekend. Today, 57 at noon. Absolutely gorgeous weather. I mean, just beautiful out there. Blue skies and 62 for a high temperature. Northerly wind at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Clouds come back in overnight, so we're still going to be chilly tomorrow morning down to 40. And then temperatures really going nowhere. We're going to stay in the low 50s with clouds and that kind of damp chill. It's going to be throw the blankets over your head kind of a day tomorrow. Friday, about the same situation. We will have uh, temperatures getting into maybe the mid to upper 50s. And then the weekend looks very nice. Chilly start on Saturday, about 40, 65 in the afternoon. <coughs> Extra sunshine and clouds and more clouds Sunday and back to 70. Okie dokie pokey. Right now it is uh, 522, 46 degrees. Still coming up on GMSA, how the Fast and Furious newest movie paying tribute to late actor Paul Walker. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, five, one, one, fireball seven. Daily four numbers, one, five, two, zero, fireball zero. And your cash buy, four, five, 14, 15, 28. We also have your, is this Mega Millions? Yeah, 17, 36, 47, 51, 62, 21 was the Mega Ball with the Mega Plier of three. Welcome back. It's 526. Now is your spotlight news. The Fast and Furious films have always been about family. Now in the newest movie, two characters have a child. He's named Brian after Paul Walker's character in the movie. The ninth film is coming to theaters on May 22nd. Quentin Tarantino getting a Lifetime Achievement Award today from Kodak. He'll be honored at the fourth annual Kodak Film Awards for his contributions to the industry. Tarantino has shot all of his movies on film. That includes 10-time Oscar nominee Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, one of many films shot on film in 2019 being recognized at the event. And this year's Oscars will include a tribute to Kobe Bryant. The basketball legend who died in a helicopter crash Sunday will be acknowledged during the February 9th ceremony. Bryant wrote, executive produced, and voiced Dear Basketball, which won the Oscar for Best Animated Short in 2018. The film was based on the poem Bryant wrote, announcing his retirement from basketball. Aren't the Oscars right here on ABC? I believe on, so, yes, next Sunday. On Sunday the 9th. Yeah. 527, 46 degrees. A major earthquake hitting the Caribbean, registering a 7.7 .7 on the Richter scale. Details coming up.
Plus, Chipotle under fire in Massachusetts over child labor laws after the break. And still to come, we're learning there are more cases of U.S. service members who suffered brain injuries from the Iranian missile attack earlier this month. Good morning. It's Wednesday, January 29th. Thanks for being with us this morning. Yesterday, you were slammed with all the accidents that were happening. It was quiet until a minute ago. Oh, now we're having another accident. Now we have another accident. So uh, we're not on the highways, but underneath the highway. So Wurzbach, uh, underneath I-10, major accidents. We have a number of emergency vehicles out there right at the intersection. Okay, and uh, we had a beautiful evening last night, hoping for a gorgeous morning on our Wednesday. Uh, your hopes will come true because it's going to be beautiful. We've got clear skies out there. It is pretty chilly. It feels like January, finally, once mm -hmm. again. Temperatures are in the uh, mid to uh, lower 40s, and I think we'll continue to drop down a few more degrees. We're in the mid 40s as of right now, but it feels colder than that because still got a decent breeze out there overnight and plenty of sunshine throughout all day long, 62. So it's one of those where it's kind of on the verge where you kind of get away with the jacket, you mm -hmm. get in the shadows, breeze, and it's like, ooh, I little bit chilly. Shouldn't have left the jacket in the car. And in the next couple of days, uh, get ready. But as far as this morning is concerned, beautiful sunrise is in the offing with these uh, clear skies out there. And we've got temperatures down in the upper 30s in parts of the hill country. And I think some of this cooler air will continue to sort of filter on in here. Um, wind chills are down in the low 40s and even some mid to lower 30s out toward the hill country. It feels like 40 at Randolph and New Braunfels, as well as Balverde. Wind is still out of the uh, northwest at about uh, 10 to 15 miles per hour. Yesterday, the mold was high after all the moisture, and hopefully it's going to be dropping down a little bit today since we do have some drier air. But with the wind that's been out of the northwest most all night long, I have a feeling that number may be going up. It's going to be even colder. The trend has been for temperatures to go down all week long. It's going to be colder tomorrow, plus it's going to be damp. We do have some more showers in the forecast. Take a look at the weekend coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. So is that accident at Wurzbach underneath the highway the only one? So far, that's the only one, Mike, but... As you know, things can change in the blink of an eye, but for now, that's our only distraction. So underneath I-10 on Wurzbach, that's where we have a number of emergency vehicles uh, responding to a major accident. So at least two vehicles involved in that accident, possibly three. So just give them their fair share of the roadway, give them enough space. Continue on up to either Hebner or make your way over towards uh, medical uh, to make your way across I-10. And that way we can get after everything cleared up just as quickly as possible. Right now, I-10 and Callahan, no problems. I-10 and Friel in bound out bound lanes of the downtown vicinity. Looking pretty good. No problems there. I-10 at 1604. Leslie. New this morning, an elderly woman was found beaten to death, and police believe it was her son who did it. It happened in Balcones Heights at the Spanish Keys Apartments in the 1100 block of Babcock on the north side. According to police, they received a disturbance call just before 730 last night. Police are looking for 55-year-old Michael Kerbo this morning. They say he is the woman's son, and they believe he killed her after an argument. In your morning headlines, more U.S. service members suffered brain injuries from the Iranian missile attack on troops in Iraq earlier this month. Sixteen more cases have been added to those by the Pentagon announced last week. Seen as John Lawrence reports. President Trump at a rally Tuesday night in New Jersey applauding U.S. troops for the drone strike that killed a top Iranian general earlier this month. Weeks ago, at my direction, the U.S. military launched a flawless precision strike that killed the world's number one terrorist, Qasem Soleimani. And now the Pentagon reports 50 military personnel are suffering from traumatic brain injuries following Iran's retaliatory missile attack on U.S. forces. According to a Pentagon statement, 32 of those service members are back on duty after treatment. 18 were taken to Germany for additional evaluation and treatment. President Trump and the Pentagon originally said no U.S. troops were killed or injured in the January 8th attack from Iran. But last week in Switzerland, the president backtracked on the issue. I heard that they had headaches and a couple of other things, but I would say, uh, and I can report, it is not very serious. Traumatic brain injuries aren't always immediately apparent, but the Pentagon's announcement shows the attack was more serious than first reports indicated. The Defense and Veterans Brain Injury Center says most TBI suffered in the military are mild. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Chipotle restaurants in Massachusetts receiving a $1.3 million fine for multiple violations. 
The state's attorney general's office says it had more than 13,000 child labor violations between 2015 and 2019. Officials say dozens of Chipotle locations had employees under 18 years old without proper work permits. Chipotle is also accused of having those teens work for too many hours per week. Now, the violations include not having proper timesheets and not paying workers within six days of a pay period. Just days away from the Iowa caucus and the race for the Democratic nomination has been long with many candidates still in the running. This week candidates are focusing on closing Iowa pitches on the positives and hoping to gain last minute support from voters. CNN's Nani Romero has more on that. When you turn on the TV in Iowa, it's wall-to-wall -wall campaign ads. We know Tom Steyer is spending the most in Iowa with more than $15 million. And just this week alone, Elizabeth Warren is pumping in over a million dollars to get her message across there. From the snowy streets of Iowa. I'm here one more time to ask you to caucus for me. To sleek campaign commercials. We need to create a new way forward for our people. Candidates are making their closing arguments before the Iowa caucuses. I think this may be the most important caucus any of you would have participated in. Right now, there's a tight race in Iowa. Looking at past years, the winners of the caucuses typically get a bump in the national polls of about seven points. That momentum can fuel a campaign for a long primary season. I love campaigning here in Iowa every single day because you all are among the most powerful, influential people in our country today. Which is why Democrats running for president as a whole have spent more than $58 million since the beginning of the month to get their messages on the Iowa airwaves. Raise your hand if you've seen the TV ads. That's good. Because we spent a lot of money on those ads. The ads don't have mudslinging or attacks on Democratic rivals. Imagine all the progress we can make in the next four years. Instead, the pitches are positive. She is probably the most honest person I've ever known. That also highlight key policy positions. For a hundred years, presidents have talked about the need to guarantee health care for all. In the days and hours before the first votes are cast, candidates are attempting to unite around one goal. We need to break from the old politics and unify this nation. So Democrats are spending hundreds of millions of dollars in campaigns all across the country. Michael Bloomberg is spending the most out of everyone, but he's focused on those Super Tuesday states, all 14 of them. And now Bernie Sanders just did an ad buy of two and a half million dollars for California and Texas. In Washington, I'm Nadia Romero. Go Spurs go. Silver and Black take on the Utah Jazz tonight at the AT&T Center. Tip off is set for 7.30. 537 on your Wednesday morning, 46 degrees. More than a million of the nation's favorite cookies are being shipped to the Alamo City this week. That's right, we're talking Girl Scout cookies. Where to get yours if you still haven't ordered any, coming up on GMSA. And a massive earthquake forcing Jamaican school children to evacuate. At the break, what witnesses have to say about the shocking experience. And live cam giving us a look outside. Chilly start to your day. Don't forget the jacket, you're gonna need it. By 40, an earthquake in the Caribbean registering 7.7 .7 on the Richter scale, rattled island nations and even Miami hundreds of miles away. ABC's Trevor Alt has the latest on that. A massive earthquake Tuesday rocking the Caribbean and Miami, creating chaos and confusion, sending people out of buildings into the streets. And the alarm started sounding and they were told us to go downstairs to the stairs. We thought it was a bombing, we thought it was a shooting, we didn't know what, what it was. The earthquake registering is magnitude 7.7 .7 at a shallow depth of 6.2 miles. Its epicenter more than 400 miles from Miami off the coast of Jamaica and Cuba. In Jamaica, school children forced to evacuate. And in nearby Grand Cayman, pool water seen rattling and resort gardens flooded. But the region appears to have avoided major damage. A tsunami threat alert lifted after a few hours. The earthquake coming in the midst of extensive tectonic activity. A series of quakes shook Puerto Rico just two weeks ago, which sits along the same set of tectonic plates. Thankfully, Tuesday's quake not causing any reported injuries so far. Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. Right now it's 541, we're 46 degrees. Here's a look at what's coming up on GMSA. Okay, if that's not a face, look at that. It looks like you got in a fight with an Oreo cookie and it went all over your face, little buddy. You're going to meet this guy. Him kind of nervous. Coming up on Good Morning San Antonio.
544, there will be a special White House ceremony today when President Donald Trump signs the U.S.-Mexico-Canada trade agreement. It aims to support auto manufacturing in North America, it includes updates for copyright rules, and expands market access for American dairy producers. Mexico has already certified the deal. However, Canada still needs to ratify it. The Federal Reserve will announce its decision on interest rates this afternoon, although it's expected the board will leave the benchmark rate unchanged. National unemployment rate is at a 50-year low, and economic growth remains solid at a roughly 2% annual rate. Well, it is puppy time, and here from the San Antonio Humane Society, a new face. Welcome, Alexis Castillo. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good morning. We're excited it looks to be like here. somebody took a bunch of Oreo cookies and just went like this and glued them all over this I guy. Know. Hi. This is Bowtie. He is a three month old Australian cattle dog mix. Um, he is a pretty big pup, as you can see, so he's going to grow to be a pretty big boy. Uh, but he's very playful, very energetic. He's just a little nervous right now. He's camera shy. It's okay. He had a tough ride over in the car, too. So. <laughs> yes, he did. He did. But he's a trooper. And so, yeah, he's really playful. We're hoping to find him a home that can match his energy. And, of course, he loves the kisses, as you can see, and all the snuggles. Oh, look at your, look at, <laughs> that face is just great. I love the markings on this mm -hmm. guy. It's all over your paws, mm -hmm. too. So he is gorgeous. You just look like you got into a mess. Yes, yes, you did, puppy. So, um, yeah, Fiesta is around the corner, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I know you started this a couple of weeks back, but El Rey yes. Fido. Yes, it's slowly approaching. Um, our El Rey Fido competition is, uh, is fundraising competition is happening. Uh, it's our annual fundraising competition, and um, how you sign up for it is you go to sahumane.org slash ERF um, to sign up your pup um, to hopefully become Fiesta royalty. Uh, you post a photo, you... Uh, do a little bio and start uh, raising money for the shelter and it's a really great cause um you know if you love fiesta like most san antonians oh, yeah. do right everyone pretty much in town then uh and you want your pub to be fiesta royalty then it's you know you should hurry up and sign up <laughs> and think of the bragging that you can do on your pub too <laughs> so if you'd like more information about that and like she said it's a fantastic fundraiser or this little guy mr bowtie yeah here. maybe mr bowtie can be el rey fido 2020. Think, be, I think that's fido, what he huh? just said right he just wants to go home and go back to bed and get off <laughs> TV here. So just uh, head on over to the San Antonio Humane Society, 4004 Fredericksburg Road. Give them a call at 226-7461. Thank you, Lexus. Thank you. Had a fight or lost a fight with an Oreo cookie? I don't know. Looks like but it's a continuous or, fight. Oh, that poor agreed. little thing was just so nervous. Yeah. I know. He you could tell. He's going to be a big dog, too. Yeah. Because the paws on that thing were huge. So uh -huh. anyway, that and the uh, El Rey Fido raised a bunch of money for them. Very uh -huh. sweet dog. Mm -hmm. Very sweet. Let's uh, check in with Marcus, find out how your traffic's looking on this Wednesday morning. Well, that accident that we had, I-10 and Wurzbach officers managed to move everything to a parking lot. So the intersection opened once again. So no problems right now on the highways. Let's take a look at uh, TransGuide as we move on. You can see that uh, no issues out there. 1604 at Hebner. We don't get that shot too often. So uh, that's a good shot there on that far north side, 1604 area. 35 at Evans, north and south on lanes, starting to pick up in volume, and then all the way through 35 at 410, and there's that 410 west cutoff. You can see a steady stream of traffic on those southbound main lanes, but no delays in anyone's travel times. And up there by the airport, 21 410. We're also seeing some increases in the traffic on 410 and on the westbound lanes, not so much on the eastbound right just yet, and a few vehicles up there on the connector ramps. But all in all, right now, not bad out there in the highways. Good. That's Thanks, actually Marcus. a really pretty picture, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That is. Gold. We went from silver to gold. A lot better than yesterday's picture. Ugh. Yeah, <laughs> and better than what tomorrow's picture is probably going to be like because we will have another wet commute, it looks like, tomorrow, mm -hmm. maybe even Friday morning, too. Okay, so, so be yeah. careful. Right. But tonight, but, not today. No, this morning, just make sure you grab a uh, coat, grab some sunglasses. Not right now, but you'll need them when the sun finally does come up. And then, I love this picture. Doesn't that look nice? Oh, just to, I mean, be out there and... All we're missing is dairy cows and bluebell ice cream. Can you smell the brisket? Mm-hmm. Um, ice cream and brisket, so that's... <laughs> I ain't got my mind on that. Anyway, thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Uh, we have not seen the glow yet. It's going to be, oh, at least about another hour, or about a half an hour, 45 minutes, I should say, before we start to see that little glow. The sun doesn't come up till roughly 725 now. And we're at 46 here in town, 42 Bandera. 46 up the road at Canyon Lake and Divine at 41.
However, there is a wind chill out there in some places. It feels like 40 here in town, 39 Balverde, uh, Bernie right now. It feels like about 35 degrees. We've got these winds coming in here out of the northwest. You know, in some places, Kerrville, there's no wind to speak up, but then and to Braunfels, still about 18 miles per hour. So we'll have a, enough of a breeze this morning and enough today to make you want to not leave your coat in the car, even though it's going to be plenty of sunshine and we've got dry air upstairs in the atmosphere. So the beautiful blue skies, but uh, temperatures are only going to be in the low 60s today. So eh, it's uh, still kind of jacket weather. Here's the uh, computer models. Like I said, clear skies all day long today. No problem there. And then tomorrow morning, we start to see the clouds move back on in here. Notice how computers model is not very very aggressive as far as any rain. Yes, we will have some showers around here, and then this one especially has some down here along the coastal plain by Friday morning, uh, but elsewhere it's going to be, I think, kind of hard to come by. This won't be a big, big rain event. As a matter of fact, I was looking at one of the other computer models where it shows some of the potential rainfall totals, and for most of the area it had nothing. I mean, maybe less than a tenth of an inch of rain at best. So again, this won't be a big rain event except down here along the, the coastal plain. And and we'll keep the clouds around a couple of showers possible throughout the day tomorrow and not many. And then going into early Friday, then we'll start to clear out late in the afternoon Friday. And we'll start off with uh, more sunshine and a couple of clouds on Saturday morning and then a few more clouds in the afternoon, but still a nice looking day. And as temperatures continue to go down, high temperatures throughout the rest of the week, then we start to rebound for the weekend. So we'll get back up into the mid 60s uh, Saturday and back up close to 70 by Sunday. But as you can see, we do have plenty of clouds around here on Sunday, but I think most everybody's going to be inside watching the Super Bowl anyway. Uh, 57 degrees today at noon today. Plenty of sunshine, still cool and 62 for high temperature. You get in the shadows and you know, want to keep your coat handy. Wind out of the north at 10 to 15 miles per hour. And then the clouds move in here overnight down to 40 again tomorrow morning. But we'll have some a uh, couple of showers here and there. 52 uh, for a high temperature. That'll be it. So it's going to be one of those damp, chilly sort of days and Friday a little bit better thanks to a little clearing in the afternoon 65 on Saturday after starting off at 40. So if you are going to come down and watch the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive or go to the KSAC Corral or do both, it's going to be kind of cold. So grab a jacket and then uh, 65 by the afternoon. All right. Thank you, Mike. We'll see you there. 551, 46 degrees. It's Girl Scout cookie season. Hallelujah. You know what that means, having to choose between all your favorites. Coming up on GMSA, find out where you can score yourself a box before they sell out. Your pick three numbers, 511, Fireball 7, Daily 4, 1520, Fireball 0. And your cash five numbers, 45, 14, 15, 28. Mega Million, 17, 36, 47, 51, 62, 21 is the Mega Ball with the Mega Plier of three. Good morning, coming up here on GMA. Batman has begun. Filming started this week for The Batman, in which Robert Pattinson will don the fabled cape. Director Matt Reeves tweeted out a picture marking the beginning of production. And recently, while promoting his movie The Lighthouse, Pattinson said he'd been a fan of The Dark Knight since he was a kid. Massive. Like, it's kind of wild. I can't really believe I'm doing it, really. The Batman also stars Zoe Kravitz and Colin Farrell. It's expected in theaters June 2021. Tonight on ABC, go behind the scenes of the recent royal drama, Royal Divide. Harry, Meghan, and the Crown will attempt to shed some light on what led the Duke and Duchess of Sussex to break with the royal family. Do you think they walked away or were they pushed away? Deborah Roberts hosts Royal Divide tonight on ABC. Seems people want to watch art imitate life. In the wake of all the news about coronavirus, a movie about the outbreak of a deadly disease is back on the charts. 2011's Contagion, starring Gwyneth Paltrow and Matt Damon, hit number 10 Tuesday on Apple's iTunes movie rental chart, sharing space with current hits including Joker and Parasite. It's extremely rare for a nine-year-old movie to crack the top 10. And happy birthday today to media mogul Oprah Winfrey. She's 66, while actor Tom Selleck is 75. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Time to get out your stretchy pants. A huge shipment of Girl Scout cookies is headed to the Alamo City. One million boxes will arrive this week. If you've ordered them from a local Girl Scout, you should be receiving yours soon. If you haven't ordered any, there is still time. You can check out a list of stores. The, uh, they will be sold at, uh, of course, you know, the Girl Scouts show up. They're outside usually with a table and they'll sell, sell them to you right there. That's all on KSAT dot com.
It's about three till right now, still ahead in our next hour. When should you start talking to your kids about wealth and poverty? What experts suggest for parents when having conversations on the subject with your kids? And Trans Guide, we've already had a couple of incidents. There's 1604 at Heater. Marcus will get you up to speed coming up. are actively searching for a man who they believe beat his mother to death last night. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. How the Balcones Heights Police Chief describes their latest homicide. And we have more on a critical piece of evidence found by detectives in the case of the man accused of being the medical center rapist. And live cam giving us a peek outside. Much different picture than it was yesterday. We don't have any rain in the area, but it is a bit colder. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And midweek greetings to you. Good morning. It is Wednesday. It is January 29th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. Grab your coat because you're going to need it this morning. Yeah, and rain is still in the forecast. Mike joined us now. What's going on over there? Well, we do have a little bit of rain tomorrow. I don't think this is going to be a big deal. Most of the uh, kind of nuisance rain, uh, the majority of it's going to be down along the, the coastal plain tomorrow and then into Friday. But as far as today goes, let's talk about this. It's just beautiful out there. And yes, it feels like January again. We've got clear skies. We've got temperatures. We're down to 45 now in town, 42 Bandera, 38 Lost Maples, 45 also at Randolph, and the warm spot on this map is Floresville at 50. There is a bit of a wind chill, though. We still have a decent breeze out there right now. It feels like 39 out at the airport, so definitely bundle up 35 up the road in Bernie. Winds are still about 10, close to 15 miles per hour, and we'll keep a, enough of a breeze around throughout the day to where you want to keep your jacket handy throughout the day. Mold yesterday was on the high side. Mountain Cedar moderate. I have a feeling these two may kind of flip-flop a little bit. Mold with the dry air should be going down, but Mountain Cedar with those northwesterly winds probably going to be getting a good shake, even though we're sort of getting toward the tail end of the season. Temperatures, I think we'll drop down a few more degrees in the next uh, hour or so, and we still have that wind chill to deal with. And then beautiful, just a, a gorgeous day, deep blue skies today. We make it up into the uh, mid to upper 50s at noon, and then we'll top off at 62 today, which is actually a couple of degrees below normal. Beautiful day, no complaints here. Keep a jacket handy. Uh, you'll definitely want one the next couple of days because not only do we have the chance for a little bit of rain, but temperatures will be about 10 degrees cooler for high temperatures tomorrow. We'll take a look at the head to the weekend coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo and had a few problems earlier this morning. The map looks pretty clear. Is that Everything's cleared up for the moment, so right, right now things look great out there, Mike. No issues, no delays in anyone's travel time. So as we switch over to Transguide, folks, this is what you can expect up on the northeast side, 35, 410, looking pretty good. Steady streams on the southbound main lanes. Now 37 and Jones Avenue, both north and southbound lanes, starting to get a few more vehicles out there, but no congestion evident up there, 281 at 410, up there by the airport. And then 21 and Grayson, north and southbound lanes, running smoothly right now. Mark? Thank you, sir. This morning, police continue to look for the man who they think was responsible for beating his 76-year-old mother to death. Happened late last night at the at Balcones Heights apartment complex, the Spanish Keys over on Babcock. Sarah Costa is live at the complex with a description of the suspect. Sarah? Good morning, Mark. And the man that police say they are looking for is 55-year-old Michael Wayne Kerbo, who they believe is responsible for beating his 76-year-old mother to death. The Balcones Heights Police Chief John Jahanara says they first got the call around 7 last night from the victim asking police to help her kick her son out of her apartment after the two got into an argument. When police arrived, Kerbo had already left. Then police say around 11 o'clock last night, it was a friend of Kerbo that called police from a gas station across the street after Kerbo mentioned his mother might need a welfare check. He had a friend call uh, for him and the friend notified us and let us know that uh, there was uh, possibly injuries or she had passed away, which is um, uh, the victim. 
And uh, so once our officers made location, Mr. Kerber was nowhere to be found. When police arrived, they found the 76 year old woman badly beaten and dead. Chief Jahanara described the scene as horrific and say they actively are continuing to search for Michael Wayne Kerbo, that 55 year old suspect this morning. Live from Balcones Heights, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Sarah. Take a look at your screen, everybody. San Antonio police need your help to find an elderly woman who has disappeared and may be in danger. 82 year old Rita Brown was last seen in the 12,500 block of Paloma Trail on Monday. She was driving her white 2019 Buick Encore with a Texas license plate of LWN 7486. She is right handed with a straight shoulder length, shoulder length hair, I should say, that's usually in a ponytail. If you have any information, call the San Antonio Police Department's Missing Persons Unit. Well, what prosecutors say was a critical piece of evidence, a gold watch was found by detectives during a search of an apartment of Anton Harris. He's on trial. He's accused of being the medical center rapist. According to testimony of the detectives on scene, that's not all police found in Harris's bedroom. Paul Venema in court as prosecutors take the jury along for that search. Anton Harris was 16 years old when the series of rapes began. He was arrested in June 2017 following his graduation from Marshall High School, where he was a star basketball player. He always said, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, and, and uh, was polite. We never had any type of uh, issues with him. Olandek, Harris's basketball coach, provided police with a big break in the rape cases. He was shown this picture taken from a gas station security camera near the apartment complex where a woman had been raped. When I first saw the picture, I looked at the face and I thought it, it looked uh, like Anton. And when I scanned the rest of the picture and saw his legs because uh, he's wearing shorts, um, I, I knew it was Anton at that time. With that identification, detectives obtained a warrant and searched an apartment that Harry shared with his family in the medical center area. There was like a rose gold colored uh, fossil watch um, that had like a, a gemmed face to it. That fit the description of a watch the woman Harris is on trial for raping said was stolen when she was attacked as she entered her medical center apartment on May 28th of 2017. The search also turned up two guns, a knife, and a gray hoodie. In most of the rapes, the victims reported that they were attacked by a slim African-American male wearing a gray hoodie who brandished either a knife or a pistol. This trial, as complex cases often do, has been moving slowly. This is the second week. Best guess for closing arguments, Thursday. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Paul Venema. We plan to debrief Paul about this story coming up today on GMSA at 9. Right now on KSAT.com, we have an in-depth look at the case and how it unfolded. You can also get the full story right now on the KSAT TV app. That's available for download to your streaming device. The Texas Historical Commission wants more time before deciding on approval of the city's request to move the cenotaph that sits near the Alamo. The Texas Historical Commission is asking the city to give more information on the project, including more explanation on why it should be moved and a list of any potential alternate sites where the monument could be placed. The City Council and the Historic and Design Review Commission already approved the relocation a few hundred feet away as part of a larger plan to redesign Alamo Plaza. The commission hopes to get the information during its next meeting on March 24th and 25th. 607, lots of questions still remain for lawmakers in President Trump's impeachment trial. Over the next couple of days, senators will be allowed to submit questions to the House managers or the president's counsel, but not both. Moving forward, all the attention now centered around potential witnesses and Republican leader Mitch McConnell telling members in a closed door meeting he does not have the votes to block potential witnesses from appearing. Four key Senate Republicans say they want to hear from former National Security Advisor John Bolton. Bolton's upcoming book links President the President to withholding aid from Ukraine in exchange for investigating former Vice President Joe Biden. Well, none of the latest on the coronavirus scare. A plane with as many as 240 evacuated Americans landed at March Air Force Base outside Los Angeles this morning. The government chartered that plane to get American citizens and diplomats out of Wuhan, China, which is the epicenter of the coronavirus outbreak. The CDC will quarantine the Americans for three days in California. China has cut off access to Wuhan and 16 other cities to prevent people from leaving and spreading the virus further. 
Also in response, both the University of Texas and Texas A&M have suspended student travel to the affected country. Air carriers, United Airlines, and British Airways have also suspended any flights to mainland China. Back here at home, still time to donate blood and help replenish the dangerously low supplies in San Antonio. This week, our KSAC community partners holding a blood drive with University Health System. Process takes about 30 minutes and each donation can impact three lives. Well, if you want to donate, just head to the University Hospital, which is in the 4500 block of Medical Drive. Donor rooms are typically open from 830 in the morning until 5 in the evening, and they will stay open later today until 7 p.m. And for you early risers, like us here on GMSA, donor rooms will open at 7 a.m. and close at 5 on Friday. For more information, go to KSAT.com. Click on the KSAT Community tab. Here's some stories trending right now on KSAT.com. This gorgeous, nearly $8 million mansion for sale in Bernie might make you feel like you're in Italy. It sits on 17 acres, has a double wrought iron gate that leads up to the four-bedroom, four-bathroom property. If you ever dreamed of 25 foot ceilings and a giant brick oven, pizza oven rather, this just might be your dream home. And more than 50 Longhorn cattle will fill the streets of downtown San Antonio Saturday morning, kicking off this year's San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. The 13th annual Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive begins at 11 a.m. at I-35 and Houston Street, following a route through downtown that ends at La Villita. Would you like a VIP experience? Well, we are hosting KSAC Corral. It's an event that lets you enjoy the festivities up close while mingling with some of the KSAC folks like us. We have the info plus maps and the parade route on KSAT.com. We will be there. Yes. We would love to meet you and your family to maybe take a few pictures. Right now, 6, 10, 45 degrees. Still ahead what the Justice Department is doing to shut down a scheme involving companies that connect hundreds of millions of robocalls across the country each month. And next, the first of its kind crosswalk in Texas, making drivers think twice about speeding through a local school zone. And taking a look outside with live cam. Once again, don't forget the jacket. You're going to need it, but it's going to be a pretty day. It's an optical illusion meant to slow local drivers down. The city of Windcrest has put up a 3D crosswalk, and it's a first of its kind in Texas. That's right. Take a look closely. You'll see what's making drivers outside of Windcrest Elementary do a double take at the crosswalk. The three-dimensional floating crosswalk appeared just over a month ago. Ron Lemos, the contractor who made it, says that the city wanted to try out something new, so he gave it a shot. I want it to feel as if it's as, as a crosswalk that's floating and it's got a shade underneath so that way it kind of gives a perspective to kind of slow down. It gives it more time to, to be able to recognize who's around. It's just another tool that we're trying to use uh, aside from the, the signs and at times we have the crossing guards here still and, and uh, just something else to get their attention. You have to get the view from the right angle, but once you do, you'll see that kind of fun floating effect. The city says it's exploring the possibility of adding more 3D crosswalks around the school. The contractor says the price for it is a little more than the average crosswalk, but that's because of the extra time and paint that it takes to make it. Definitely Coolness. gets people's attention, right? Love it. 615, let's see how the morning commute's going on your Wednesday. Marcus? Well, right now, as we take a look at the roadways, Trans guys showing us 35 at Evans, southbound lanes at 35, starting to get a little bit congested out there. We're seeing some slowdowns. Now, this is 35 at 410 uh, on those southbound main lanes coming back towards the downtown vicinity. 37 at Jones, north and southbound lanes, no problems. Not there by the airport. Traffic in both directions on 410 running smoothly. Connector ramps, no congestion. 604 at Hebner, still looking pretty good. As we take a look at one more camera, there we go. 410 at Cherry Ridge. The I-10-410 interchange, very busy at this time. Thank you, Marcus. Burr. Burr. Yeah, it's pretty chilly out there. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a breeze, too, and it's just enough to... Uh, <laughs> that's, that's not the wind chill. That's the... Good Lord. I know, my hands are cold. I was going to say, sit on your, your hands like that, so... Stick them in the coffee or something. No, I'm not going to stick them in the coffee. <laughs> um, it's bad advice. Hold the coffee? Hold the coffee. It's better advice. Okay. Yeah, but necessity is the mother of invention. Put them in the coffee. They'll warm up very quickly. So, anyway, uh, take a look at this KSAC Connect picture. You want your hands warm or not? Hey, that's beautiful. That is Ooh, absolutely looks like gorgeous. a painting. It does. I love those and those trees there in the foreground, the bar in the background. That's great. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect <laughs> picture. I love all of these. And is uh, starting to see the uh, glow yet of the uh, 
the sunrise. Not quite. Got about another hour or so till it starts to come up. But we got a couple of planes that are looking like they're lining up, getting ready to come on in here. Great, great flying weather today. 41 is the temperature in Bernie. 40 Comfort. 37 Lost Maples. 45 in and around the metropolitan area. Hello, to though down to 41 degrees, and then. The wind chill. Yeah, there's that breeze out there, so it feels like it's in the uh, upper 30s here in town. 29 is now the wind chill in Lost Maples, and the wind is out of the northwest, still breezy enough, especially this time of the morning, 10, 15 miles per hour, and a little bit stronger up there in New Braunfels. We're going to continue to keep a, enough of a breeze around today, so you want to keep your jacket handy. And we've got really, really dry air. I mean, this kind of brownish shade, that's the bone dry air upstairs in the atmosphere. Of course, low humidity here at the surface, and uh, this means with the dry air upstairs, we're going to have those gorgeous blue skies today and last all day long, most of the evening. And then late tonight, overnight, we're going to start to see the clouds move back on in here. Notice how now this computer model is not really too aggressive as far as rain chances. It, it brings more in here by early Friday morning, especially down along the, the coastal plain. But elsewhere, it's just, I think, going to be... Now, kind of the scattered variety of a few showers. This computer model also a different one is not overly aggressive as far as rain is concerned tomorrow, but there will be some of those showers around here. More humidity, uh, cloud covered, it's going to keep temperatures down in the low 50s, so it's going to be sort of that damp chill and we will at least keep the chance of rain around through Friday morning. Then we'll start to clear out a little bit by the evening hours and then uh, maybe a mixture of sunshine and clouds on Saturday. So a good looking day. Temperatures, like I said, low 50s tomorrow. We re rebound a little bit Friday and then come back up into the mid 60s. So about a normal high on Saturday after a chilly start and then even warmer on Sunday. But we will have more clouds around here on Sunday and then another chance for some rain on Monday and we should clear out after that. So here's what's going on with the upper level steering winds. First of all, it keeps everything the really, really cold stuff time being up there to the north of us. The uh, kind of a bit of a trough, if you will, comes through on Friday. We get this nice northwesterly flow for the weekend, so that's going to bring in some nice weather, except for a couple of clouds around here. The little bit of a uh, glitch coming through on Monday and by late next week. Now there's a fairly big dip in the uh, jet stream, so we may actually have a stronger front moving through here by the latter part of next week, but you know, that's still Still a ways off. Wait and see situation today. Boy, nothing. Uh, no question about this. Glorious looking day. 57 degrees at noon. Plenty of sunshine, sunglasses, a coat this morning and probably all day long. 62 for a high temperature with northerly wind at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Cold again tomorrow morning. As a matter of fact, cold the next few mornings down around 40 normal low temperature, but we stay only in the low 50s tomorrow. Upper 50s on Friday with some showers, sort of that damp chill. And Saturday looks like a really nice day. Sunday, a lot more clouds, 70 for high temperature. Another chance of rain on Monday and then clear out by Tuesday. But yeah, for the uh, cattle drive, Case at Corral on Saturday. Great weather. We ain't lucking out on these weekends, aren't mm -hmm. we? Thanks. Right now, it's just about 620, 45 degrees. Coming up next, Aaron Hernandez's former fiance is speaking out about an explosive new documentary about him. We have more on the emotional exclusive interview coming up after the break. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it right now on KZ.com for your chance to win a $25 gift card from We Are Circle K. Mornings were made for better things than rheumatoid arthritis or psoriatic arthritis. When considering another treatment, ask about Zelljans XR, a once daily pill for adults with moderate to severe rheumatoid arthritis or active psoriatic arthritis for whom methotrexate did not work well enough. It can reduce pain, swelling, and significantly improve physical function. Zelljans can lower your ability to fight infections like TB. Don't start Zelljans if you have an infection. Taking a higher than recommended dose of Zelljans for RA can increase risk of death, serious, sometimes fatal infections, cancers, including lymphoma, and blood clots have happened, as have tears in the stomach or intestines, serious allergic reactions, and changes in lab results. Tell your doctor if you've been somewhere fungal infections are common, or if you've had TB, hepatitis B or C, or are prone to infections. Don't let another morning go by without asking your doctor about Zelljans XR.
And this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive. Do you still believe that your fiance was innocent? The former fiance of Aaron Hernandez speaking out to Amy Robach, addressing new claims put forth in the Netflix docuseries Killer Inside, the mind of Aaron Hernandez. Do you want to comment at all on that aspect of this documentary and the rumors that have been there that Aaron may have been bisexual or gay? If he did feel that way, or if he felt the urge, I wish that I, I was told. I would not have loved him any differently. I would have understood. I, the I emotional exclusive interview is coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. In your morning consumer headlines, Justice Department fighting back against those annoying robocalls. In a first of its kind move, the DOJ filed temporary restraining orders against two companies that allegedly allowed calls to be made they knew were fraudulent. Apple is boasting record earnings in what the company is calling a blockbuster quarter. The tech giant credits phone sales for the incredible numbers. That's after the devices brought in an astounding 56 billion dollars. Some lucky drivers up in New England could soon be allowed to add emojis to their license plates. A Vermont lawmaker proposed a bill which would allow drivers to display one of six options to their plates. The bill doesn't say which emojis those would be. And DiGiorno is making a bet this Super Bowl Sunday that could have you enjoying free pizza. The frozen pizza brand says if at any point in the game the score is 3 to 14 or 14 to 3, DiGiorno will give you free pizza. Why that score? Because 3.14 represents um, pi, and DiGiorno says if that happens at the score, it plans to tweet out a link to a coupon for a free pizza. The coupons will be awarded on a first-come, first-served basis and only while supplies last. The coupons will be redeemable in early March ahead of Pi Day. Pizza pie. Pizza pie. 626, 45 degrees. Still ahead in our next half hour. It's a big day at the White House as President Trump gets ready to sign a brand new U.S.-Mexico-Canada trade agreement. Plus, when should you start talking to your kids about wealth and poverty? What experts suggest for parents when having conversations on the sensitive subject with your children? And Trans Guide will be right back. A 76-year-old woman found beaten to death in an apartment complex in Balcones Heights last night. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. White police believe it was her son who was responsible. We're soon going to find out what questions senators have for both sides in the impeachment trial. I'm Andrew Dibber with the latest from Capitol Hill. Outside with live cam, we've made it to midweek. Beautiful look towards downtown San Antonio on what is more January like winter morning. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday, January 29th. Thanks for being with us this morning. Uh, hopefully your day's going a lot better than it did yesterday. Well, so far we're doing pretty good. Now we had a couple of accidents earlier. Those have cleared up and they're out of the way. So right now the highways themselves look pretty good, except for one spot. Southbound 35, just after you pass that 410 West cutoff, but before you get to walls, and we do have a minor accident. Okay. okay. What can we expect weather-wise? And we know it's a little chilly, a little breezy out there. Uh, grab a coat, grab some sunglasses, and it's going to be absolutely gorgeous today. A good, I mean, just what you would expect for January. I like that. Roughly a normal low temperature and just about a normal high. We're going to warm up nicely throughout the day, but that only gets us up to 62 degrees. So a jacket's going to be a pretty good idea not only this morning, but even later on this afternoon. It's still enough of a, a breeze out there. And we do have some wind chills to deal with this morning, too. So button up. It is going to be a spectacular sunrise, however. And we're looking at one of the uh, star celestial apps. And I think that is the planet Jupiter. That uh, just passed right center. Yeah, this little uh, spot right there. I think that's uh, Jupiter. And the sun's going to be getting yeah, a little bit of a glow, glow mm -hmm. off there along the horizon right now. Sun comes up in about uh, about 55 minutes or so. 45 here in town, 41 Bandera, 37 now Lost Maples, and 42 in Divine. Wind chill temperatures, 29 is what it feels like in Lost Maples, 31 Kerrville, because we do still have a breeze out of the northwest, about uh, roughly 10, 15 miles per hour. And like I said, it's going to be enough of a breeze throughout the rest of the day to mm, make you want to keep your jacket handy. Yesterday, mold was on the high side, and Mountain Cedar was moderate, a little bit of ash showing up, and I have a feeling that number may 
may be going up just given the fact we've got those northwesterly winds all night long. Dry air hopefully will bring the mold down somewhat. It's going to be even colder the next couple of days. Plus, you got that dampness on top of it. A few. Now, a few showers around here. I don't think it's going to be a huge deal as far as rain is concerned. And the weekend is looking nice. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. And there's that. This is when you were just talking about 35, 410 South Cutoff. That's the one we're just talking about, Mike. So southbound main lanes at 35. Just after you pass that 410 West Cutoff, before you get to the walls of exit on the left-hand shoulder, no less. That's where we have that accident. So it is causing some problems as you see some delays backing up. Uh, not quite to 1604 yet, but it won't be long. Uh, we need to get some uh, vehicles out there and get those vehicles off the roadway. They're going to be in that blocking that left hand lane. Those two vehicles there. Now remember, folks, this is a great uh, chance to remind you if you're involved in a minor accident and your vehicles are movable, you are required to remove them from the highway. And why? Well, we would avoid secondary accidents, but we also avoid that congestion like you see right here, backing up almost all the way to 1604 at this point. Leslie. Thank you, Marcus. A son allegedly beat his 76 year old mother to death, and now police say he's on the run. All of this happened late last night. It was at a Baconis Heights apartment complex, the Spanish Keys, which is on Babcock. Our Sarah Acosta is live at the complex, and you spoke with the Baconis Heights police chief this morning. What do you have to say? Yes, Leslie, I spoke with police chief John Jahanara and he described the scene as a gruesome one after they found 76 year old woman left dead and beaten in her kitchen of her apartment complex. Police chief Jahanara says this all happened at seven o'clock last night when they first got a call from the 76 year old victim asking police to help her kick her son out of her apartment after the two got into an argument. When police arrived, her son, her, Michael Wayne Kerbo, who is 55, had already left the property. Then police say around 11 o'clock last night, it was a friend of Kerbo that called police from a gas station across the street after Kerbo mentioned something odd to his friend about his mother. So what's questionable as well is that it was, uh, I think something happened to my mother. Um, something may have happened to her. Uh, she may be injured. She may have passed away. Uh, it was just all questionable. when. The witness had received this information. He found it odd, so that's why he notified us. When police arrived, no one answered the door, and that's when they say they had to force their way in and found the woman dead. Police say they are actively searching for the suspect who they believe is responsible for that fatal beating. Again, it's 55-year-old Michael Wayne Kerbo. Live from Balcones Heights, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Sarah. After arguments from House managers and President Donald Trump's defense team, it's now time for questioning. President's counsel has rested and looking ahead. It's a looming all out battle for potential witnesses. ABC Andrew Dimbert on Capitol Hill with more on what's to come. That ends our presentation. The president's defense rests its case. You cannot impeach a president on an unsourced allegation. Now the next phase of the trial begins questioning. Over the next two days, senators will be allowed to submit questions to the House managers or the president's counsel, but not both. Questions must be submitted to the Chief Justice in writing. Mr. Chief Justice, I have uh, reached an agreement with the Democratic leader on how to proceed. But moving forward, all the attention now centering around witnesses. Republican leader Mitch McConnell telling his members in a closed door meeting that he does not have the votes to block them. Four key Senate Republicans suggest they want to hear from former National Security Advisor John Bolton. Bolton's upcoming book links the president to withholding aid from Ukraine in exchange for investigating Joe Biden. I think that Bolton probably has something to offer. Um, so we'll, we'll figure out how we're going to, to learn more. And in another turn, the president's former chief of staff, John Kelly, reportedly now saying, I believe John Bolton and suggesting Bolton should testify, saying if there are people that could contribute to this, either innocence or guilt, I think they should be heard. This while Trump's personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani on CBS News, ripped Bolton for his book. Here's the only conclusion I can come to, and it's a harsh one, and I feel very bad about it. 
He's a backstabber. And the question period could last up to eight hours today and eight hours tomorrow with that critical witness vote possibly coming on Friday. Now, if no new witnesses are allowed to testify in this trial, then things could wrap up by the end of the week. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Capitol Hill. More U.S. service members suffered brain injuries than previously thought from the Iranian missile attack on troops in Iraq earlier this month. The Pentagon says about 50 military personnel are now dealing with those injuries. President Trump and the Pentagon originally said no U.S. troops were killed or injured in the January 8th attack from Iran. Traumatic brain injuries aren't always immediately apparent, but the Pentagon's announcement shows the attack was more serious than first reports indicated. The Veterans of Foreign Wars is calling for the president to issue an apology for minimizing the brain issues service members are dealing with now. There will be a special ceremony at the White House today when President Trump signs the U.S.-Mexico-Canada trade agreement. The revised agreement will expand market access for American dairy producers, also aims to support auto manufacturing in North America, and includes updates for digital trade and copyright rules. Mexico's ratified the deal, but Canada still needs to approve it. NASA has a new mission that's taking it straight to the sun. The space agency says its new solar orbiter will try and snap the first pictures of the sun's north and south poles. It has been custom designed to handle the sun's heat. NASA says it will use gravity from Venus and the Earth to swing itself out of the space aligned with the sun's equator where all planets orbit. The orbiter is slated to launch from Cape Canaveral next month. That's such a cool video. Our San Antonio Spurs get ready to take on the Utah Jazz tonight. The team dropped out of the Western Conference playoff picture again after losing three in a row following that loss in Chicago. That's right. Right now the Spurs two games behind Memphis. They have that eighth and final playoff spot. Spurs have just two home games left before they embark on their annual rodeo road trip. This year it's an eight-gamer, a six-city tour that covers over 23 days on the road. Game against the Jazz tonight, 7.30 at the AT&T Center. Saturday, they're at home. Welcome the Charlotte Hornets to town. Meanwhile, there is an online petition that's now gained more than two and a half million signatures asking the NBA to change its logo to Kobe Bryant. It would be a way to honor the former Lakers star and five-time NBA champion in the wake of his untimely death. Since 1971, the logo has been the silhouette of Jerry West, who was the general manager of the Lakers when they traded for Kobe's draft rights. There's also a move among current NBA players to wear the number 8 or 24 to self-retire their numbers to honor Kobe Bryant. The only Spurs team member that wears one of the two numbers is Patty Mills, who is currently wears the number eight jersey. Just about 640, 45 degrees. How young is too young to start talking about wealth and poverty? Just ahead, why your children may know more than you think. Welcome back, 642. Rich, poor, middle class parents often believe it's their responsibility to shield their children from economic differences and social classes. But new research shows children as young as five years old are not economically blind. In fact, by the time they reach pre-kindergarten, kids know the difference. As Marilyn Moritz reports, these young people also have some thoughts on what to do about it. So I'm wondering if you've ever heard about the words rich or the word poor. Have you ever heard those yes. words? This group of primary school kids already knows what money can buy. I think of middle class as my family because my family has enough money to buy like the stuff we need. I feel that my family is rich because, well, um, they have two wonderful children. Me and my brother. UCLA developmental psychologist Rasmita Mystery studies social stratification and the impact it has on children. So thinking about education and occupations and income and wealth, we think if we don't draw attention to it, then maybe kids won't think that it's important. And in fact, we, what we know is it's the opposite. Mystery's team showed five to eight year olds four depictions of local neighborhoods and asked them which look looked most like theirs. Most of the kids chose the middle class photo. More than a third were also able to point to concrete reasons, such as the appearance of a house. She also asked them if it was fair that some people are rich and some are poor. Well, it's not fair, but not a lot of things are fair. Mystery says parents should continue the conversation at home. Don't ignore your child's observations. Use their curiosity to start a conversation. 
Instead of saying a homeless person, use phrases like a person who is homeless. This reinforces that poverty does not define a person, but describes their current circumstances. Encourage concern, compassion, and action. And I think our task as adults is to help them make meaning of this. Mystery is working with teachers to develop a plan to help children understand why there are differences. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Yeah, thank you, Maryland. 645. Time to check the roadways once again on your Wednesday morning. Marcus, what's happening? Well, take a look at the map here, folks. Accident has been cleared. It's moved out of the area. Officers showed up, uh, got those vehicles moved off the roadway. So now we can focus on the uh, congestion we have in other areas. That southbound 35 congestion is improving. Starting to see some folks moving once again. And up on the northwest side, you can see Bandera 604 area. Eastbound 604 headed back over towards that I-10 604 interchange starting to get a little bit busier. So right now, southbound 410 at uh, southbound 35 rather, excuse me, at 410 looking pretty good. 35 at 604, you can see long lines of traffic headed from the city of New Braunfels back down towards uh, 604 and eventually into the downtown area. I-10 and Hebner, eastbound and westbound lanes are also picking up in volume and uh, all the way through I-10 at Callahan. And then take a look at 410 at Cherry Ridge there. You can see off in the distance the I-10, 410 interchange. So everyone is moving at the speed limit right now. All travel times are well within the normal travel time range. So now that we have that one accident off the highway, things are looking better. Yes, they are. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Don't forget your jacket today, and oh. you might want to heat up your car a little bit first. That's not a bad idea, especially out toward the hill country where mm -hmm. uh, we've got temperatures down in the 30s, and then we've got some wind chills, too, to deal with this morning. So uh, it's going to be a gorgeous day. This is a beautiful picture Ooh. from a couple of days ago. Yeah. Gosh, and notice, I mean, we have uh, some talented photographers out there. Oh, yeah. And just the setting is about perfect, but notice in the foreground how the grass is pretty green. You know, we've had a decent amount of rain so far. The, speaking of just gorgeous pictures, I mean, that one speaks for itself, obviously. We've had a decent amount of rain uh, so far in the month of January. We are about a quarter of an inch above normal, which is good news. We do have a little more in the forecast. I don't think it's going to add too much to our, our totals just because it's just doesn't look like it's going to be a big rain event over the next couple of days. 45 here in town, 41 Bandera, and 47 in New Braunfels. Wind chill temperatures 29 in Lost Maples, 39 here in town. So, yeah, bundle up this morning because it's just enough of a breeze and about 10, 15 miles per hour out of the northwest, and that puts the colder air just down the right down the back of your neck. Uh, very dry air, this patch of dry air that moved through late yesterday and overnight. Uh, the darker shade. Maybe a hint more moisture aloft in the atmosphere, but we're going to have some gorgeous blue skies today, along with all that sunshine. And computer model indicates obviously that lasts all day long in through the evening hours. Tomorrow morning, then clouds move on in here. And uh, throughout the day, notice how it's not really aggressive as far as rain is concerned. This is just one computer model. Um, it does keep more rain down here along the coastal plain by Friday morning, especially. And some of that could be perhaps a quarter of an inch, uh, half an inch of rain down there. But again, it, it's not going to be a huge rain event for everybody, mainly just down to the, uh, the southeast. But there will be a few showers around pretty much that nuisance kind of stuff. So right now I would look at to or if you're planning ahead to even tomorrow, maybe a bit of a damp start. Here's what's going on with the upper level steering winds and notice how first of all, most everything stays up there to the north as far as the really, really cold air. We have some of these waves that move on through here. This one comes through Friday and that puts us into a nice northwesterly flow for the weekend, which means very, very pleasant. Uh, temperatures will go back up to normal readings after continuing to drop down the next couple of days. We will have some more clouds around here, though, uh, especially late in the day on Saturday and then on Sunday. Another disturbance comes through Monday. That's going to give us a chance for some rain. And then a big, big trough is building out there to the west of us. And there are some indications that by the middle part of the week, that could really pull down some pretty cold temperatures around here. So we're not done with, with winter as of yet. We are going to finish up the month of January without hitting freezing only for the fifth time here in San Antonio, but uh, good, maybe a chance of it by uh, the first of February to hit freezing or the first week of February. 57 degrees today at noon, plenty of sunshine out there, still a bit of a breeze. So jacket's going to be a good idea today. 62 for high temperature, an absolutely spectacular looking day. We will have more clouds tomorrow and Starting off at 40, only 52. A couple of showers are possible. I don't think, like I said, it doesn't look like it's going to be a big deal as far as rain. 
But with those colder temperatures, more humidity, it's going to be a damp chill tomorrow. We'll have a chance of rain early in the day Friday, some clearing then. Weekend looks nice. Mid-60s Saturday, 70 Sunday, chance of rain Monday. Well, those morning lows are skewing downward overall, aren't they? Yeah, a little bit, especially when we go back to a couple of days ago, low and high temperatures down throughout the rest of the week after being at 80 on Sunday. Wow. Thank you, Mike. Right now it's uh, just about 10 till. We're at 45 degrees. Up next, we're going to get an update on the homicide investigation going on this morning at a Balcones Heights apartment complex. And if you're just now joining us and waking up, take a look at your Wednesday morning sunrise. You are watching TMSA. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, an ABC News exclusive with the fiance of the late NFL star Aaron Hernandez. She is breaking her silence only on GMA. This morning, police continue to search for a man who they believe is responsible for beating a 76 year old woman to death. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. This happening in Balcones Heights last night at the Spanish Keys apartment complex on Babcock. Police say they are looking for 55 year old Michael Wayne Kerbo, who they believe brutally beat his own mother, leaving the 76 year old woman dead. The Balcones Heights Police Chief John Jahanara says they first got a call around 7 o'clock last night from the victim asking police to help her kick her son out of her apartment after the two got into an argument. When police arrived, Kerbo had already left. Then police say around 11 o'clock last night, it was a friend of Kerbo that called police from a gas station across the street from the complex. After Kerbo mentioned his mother might need a welfare check, that's when police arrived at the complex again and found the 76 year old woman dead and badly beaten. Police Chief John Jahanara says the scene was a horrific one and they continue to search for their suspect, the victim's son, 55 year old Michael Wayne Kerbo this morning. From Balcones Heights, I'm Sarah Costa, KSA 12 News. He came in once to donate blood with his co-workers and he was hooked ever since. It's Blood Donor Month and this faithful donor has been donating for the last 25 years here at University Hospital. How much he's donated and why he continues to do it this morning on GMSA at 9. All right, let's take a look at traffic right now at about 5 till. Marcus, what's going on on the roadways? Well, we are seeing the congestion, but uh, luckily no accidents on the highways. Let's take a look right now. Uh, this is that congestion eastbound I-10 coming into the downtown vicinity where the upper and lower levels come back together right there at Frio. But uh, other than that, folks, just make sure you buckle up and watch that follow distance. Mike. Take a look at this picture. It is absolutely gorgeous. What a way to start the day. Plenty of clear skies out there. Look at the deep blue. I know it Sun hasn't come up yet, but uh, we're going to have some beautiful blue skies throughout the rest of today. It is pretty chilly out there. We're down to 44 degrees now in town, 40 comfort and 37 in Los Maples, but there's a bit of a wind chill and we're seeing a lot of 30s now on the map with those wind chills and even 29 in Los Maples because the wind is out of the northwest at about 10, 15 miles per hour, 57 at noon, 62 for high temperature. You might want to keep a jacket handy all day long and then even colder tomorrow. Cloudy, kind of dampish, few showers here. I don't think rain's going to be a huge deal the next couple of days, but just enough to really had that chill and then the weekend looks fantastic 65 on saturday mixture of sun and clouds and uh, 70 on sunday all right sounds good can't wait for saturday it's gonna be a lot of fun thanks for being with us everybody have a great day we have jam-packed newscast coming up on gmsa at nine